Let's pray. Jesus, we thank You for Your Word. God, we pray that You would speak to us right where we're at this morning as we read. God, I pray that You would challenge us. God, I pray that You would change us and that You would speak to us this morning. Amen. 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 Well, this morning, we're going to be reading from Philippians chapter 3. If you don't have your Bibles, that's okay. They will put the, um, the verses on the side screens and I'll also read it out. But before we get into reading, see, Philippians, Paul is writing and he's writing for a few different reasons. He wanted to say thank you because the Philippians had sent one of their members to give a gift to Paul in support in one of his many imprisonments. So, he wanted to say thank you. So they sent one of their members. Now, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly because ESL, I'm trying my best, okay? Ephroditus, I don't know, but that, that's how I'm saying it, all right? Ephroditus. When he got there to give the gift, he actually got really sick, almost died, it said. But by God's mercy, he recovered. So when Paul was writing to the Philippians, he was sending a letter of thanks back with Ephroditus to say thank you, but also so that they could see that he was well again. Now, when he's writing, he also addresses a few different things. We're going to read from Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 21. And when he, Paul begins, he starts to say that he hasn't arrived yet and he encourages us all, yes, the Philippians, but I think this encouragement is for us also, that we haven't arrived to keep pushing forward, to grow more like Christ and to humble ourselves to pursue holiness. So we're going to read from verse 12. And he says this, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection, but I press on to possess the perfection for which Jesus Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past, looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. Let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe that God will make it plain to you. But we must hold on to the progress we have already made. And he says, dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. For I have told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many of those who conduct themselves shows that they are really enemies of the cross. They're headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things and they think only about this life here on earth. But we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Christ Jesus lives and we eagerly are waiting for Him to return as our Saviour. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like His own using the same power with which He will bring everything under His control. Now this morning, I want to focus on verse 20, where Paul says something, and if you've been around church a while, you've heard it before, but we are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of heaven. And I think this morning, just as Paul was reminding the Philippians that they are citizens of heaven, this morning right here in Goodna, we need a reminder that we are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of heaven. If you're tuning in online, wherever you are, you're a citizen of heaven. So when you go to work on Monday morning, you're walking in as a citizen of, of heaven. When you drop off your kids at school, you're dropping them off as a citizen of heaven. When you deal with problems in your marriage, you're dealing with them as a citizen of heaven. And in 2024, as we pioneer again, yes, as a church, but you individually in your lives, you're pioneering again, again as a citizen of heaven. I'm, that sounds great, doesn't it? Citizen of heaven. One day I'll get to heaven. But there's got to be a little bit more than that, right? Being a citizen of heaven isn't just about where we end up. Being a citizen of heaven should impact and change the way we live our life right now. 
Don't you agree? Come on. Now, I look across this room and I see many, many beautiful nations that are represented here, right? Not all of us were born in Australia. Am I right? Come on, give me a wave if you weren't born in Australia. There you go. But we all have the privilege of calling Australia home. Beautiful country. It's awesome. Now, some of us have become Australian citizen. We might have different native languages, different ways of cooking meals. I mean, how many different versions of biryani is there? There's a Mauritian one, there's a South African one, there's an Indian one. So many different versions, right? We all do things a little bit differently sometimes. But if we've become Australian citizens, we all consider ourselves to be Australians. We're united in our desire to live in this beautiful country. But who knows that when you become an Australian citizen, you have access to certain benefits and privileges, right? That's right. You have the right to vote. You have the right to seek election to parliament, to apply work within the government or to apply for an Australian passport. But equally, there are some responsibilities that come along with being an Australian citizen You need to obey the laws of Australia. You have to vote in federal and state elections. And should the need arise, defend Australia. But as citizens of heaven, it sounds great that one day we'll end up there. But it should impact the rest of our lives right here, right now. It should change the way we speak. It should change the way we walk into situation. It should change the way we encounter things. We don't fall to the ground in desperation. We fall to our knees in prayer, right? We come to faith. Paul doesn't say one day you'll be a citizen of heaven. He says, but we are citizens of heaven. So the title of my message this morning is Citizen of Heaven. And if you're taking notes, I want to look at some benefits that we have access to and also some responsibilities that we also hold as citizens of heaven. Number one, citizens of heaven have access to the presence of God. Citizens of heaven have access to the presence of God. We are free from the enslavement of sin because of Jesus. We just took communion. We just heard about the incredible sacrifice that was paid for us. We have a King and a High Priest who intercedes on our behalf, who is our advocate with the Father and we are clothed in the righteousness of Christ. We have access to the presence of God. Just like you have access to your home, right? You have keys, you get into your house, you can get in, put the music up, however loud you want, you can do whatever you want in your home. Well, you have access to the presence of God in your car. You have access to the presence of God at work. You have access to the presence of God wherever you want. In fact, it says in Psalms 22.3, He inhabits the praises of His people. So as you pray, as you praise, as you worship, you have access to the presence of God. I mean, think about that for a moment. The God who created the world, the God who created the mountains, the God who created the rivers, the creatures, the animals. That's the God that you have access to. That's the God that you have access to. And it says in James 4, 8, draw near to Him and He will draw near to you. So it's not God that's running away from us. Sometimes it's us who become distracted And we neglect to step into the presence of what we have access to. It's a little bit like this. A little while ago, I was at uni. I was doing my bachelor. And uni was 45 minutes drive from my house. Not bad, right? Now, I had access to a car. I had access to fuel. I had access to car insurance. I also had my license but I chose to not drive because I'll be honest, I don't like driving. I do it now, but I didn't like driving even more then. So I chose to take public transport. Now in Melbourne, public transport is not the preferred mode of transportation, shall I say? And it was not a quick process. So what could have taken 45 minutes by a car took a couple of hours by public transport. 
but I chose to take public transport. I had car insurance, I even had RECV, the equivalent of RECQ, right? Roadside service assistance. But it was of no benefit to me unless I actually grabbed the keys, put it in the ignition and started to drive. It was of no benefit to me. So what I did is I was not living in the full benefit of what I had access to. Church, I want to encourage you to live in the full benefit of what you have access to. You have access to the presence of God and I get excited because I get to connect with God. I get to pray to Him. I can give my burdens just like Pastor Matt shared over to Him. It's our responsibility though to make time to get into the presence of God. It's actually what we need. It's actually what we need. You know, so often we want the change. Let's be honest. We want the transformation. We want the things to shift in our life. We want to break the habit, right? We want to beat addiction. We want to beat the depression moments that we feel. We want to beat the thoughts in our mind. Can I just encourage you that what you need is to step into the presence of God? What you need is to come before Him and worship Him and praise Him and be in the presence of God. Not just so that you can just say a list of wants and needs and desires, but so that you can hear from Him. So that you can hear from Him. So that you can read His Word and step into the presence of God. And I know... There are some people here this morning that don't feel like they can step into the presence of God. Maybe you've been looking back on things and you go, I, 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 I don't feel like I can enter in the presence of God. Can I just encourage you with this? You do not need to be perfect to enter the presence of God. That is the reason that we were talking about the great and wonderful and incredible gift that we've been given through Jesus, through His sacrifice. You do not need to be perfect to enter the presence of God. It's in those moments, I'll be vulnerable, I'll be open, where I have been broken, where I have been with so much pain that I could not describe. I have felt messy. I have felt conflicted. But it's in those intimate moments where I sit with Jesus, where I come before Him and I enter His presence, that I feel God's love, that I receive God's hope, that I receive God's peace and His restoration power begins to work inside of me. God wants to meet with you. We have access to the presence of God. And as citizens of heaven, We need to not only just recognise that we have access to the presence of God, but we need to actually step into the presence of God, enter into the presence of God. Because I don't know about you, if you want to pioneer again in 2024, I don't want to do it without the presence of God. Right? We need Him. We need Him. We need Him. Number two, the other thing that I noticed is that citizens of heaven live by faith. Listen to what Paul says here. I'm going to read from Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13. Now, I feel like a lot of people can quote 13, but they forget about the 11 and the 12 part. But I want to read from verse 11. Listen to what Paul says. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstance. Hmm. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty, but I have learnt the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through Him who gives me strength. Wow. Paul shows us what it's like to be a citizen of heaven who can live by faith. He says he can do this all through him who gives me him strength. So for him, it doesn't matter whether he has provision or he doesn't. It doesn't matter whether he's well-fed or hungry. It doesn't matter what 
difficulty or trials or what mountain stands before Him because He is content because He lives by faith. He has understood that if He has Jesus, then he can, he can step out in faith. If we are citizens of heaven this morning, I want to encourage you that we can live by faith. We can live by faith found in Jesus. But maybe you're looking at areas of your life this morning and maybe God's been challenging you to pioneer areas of your life. Maybe it's relationships that you know you need to pioneer again. Maybe you need to pioneer again in your marriage. Maybe you need to pioneer again with your grandchildren. Maybe you need to pioneer again at work or in your health. But you're looking at those areas and it can be really heartbreaking when you see the lack, when you see the gaps. But I want to encourage you that we can do it when we put our faith in Jesus. We can do it when we put our faith in Jesus. You know, we can trust God with our present, but we can also trust God with our future. We can. And if you're finding it hard to live by faith, Because when you are standing in front of all these gaps and all those missing pieces, it can be challenging. I would ask you this. If you're finding it hard to live by faith, have you been accessing the presence of God? Because it is really hard to live by faith if you haven't been accessing the presence of God. You know, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of? Hearing the Word of? Hearing the Word of God. Are you hearing faith? Are you reading faith? Because it is really hard if you're reading other things and you're not reading faith and you're not listening to faith and you're not speaking faith and you're not singing faith. It is incredibly hard to be a citizen that lives by faith if you don't. I've used this example before and I'll use it again because I feel like food is the universal language that everyone seems to understand. Imagine if I said, I'm going to eat one meal on a Sunday and then I'm not going to eat again till Sunday, but I'm going to expect to run at full pace, full zest of life, full energy and full of, you know, I don't know what that word is, but just excitement and joy, I guess. I was looking for a word and it didn't come out. ESL, right? Imagine if I did that and then during the week, I grew tired And then during the week, I just couldn't do it anymore. I didn't have the words. And then during the week, I just, I almost just got to Sunday. You would think that that would be strange, right? You would say to me, you need to refuel. You need to eat, girl. You need to eat. But some of us come here on a Sunday and we expect to get fed spiritually. And we hear faith. Yes, we do. We sing faith. Yes, we do. We speak faith, yes we do, but then you expect that to last you the whole week. And then what happens is you enter your weeks malnourished. You even enter your months malnourished, but yet you expect to live by faith. Church, I want to encourage you. We need to get in the presence of God. We need to get into the Word so that we can be citizens that can live by faith. Let's not enter our world malnourished because it's, Paul finds this contentment, this freedom, this eternal perspective that despite what he faces here on earth, the challenges, he can rest because he knows Jesus. If we're not living in the full benefit of what we have access to, we're missing out. We're missing out because instead of accessing his joy, we can sit in the discontentment of our sorrow We can become fixated on the present lack instead of experiencing His hope. And instead of experiencing His peace, we can sit in the chaos that the world has to offer and let it live inside of us. That's not what we're called for. We're citizens of heaven. We're supposed to be different. Church, I want to encourage you. You can live by faith. And number three, third thing I noticed This morning, citizens of heaven are on a mission. Citizens of heaven are on a mission. We are light bearers, light bearers. In Matthew 5, 
14 to 16 says, You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Hey, as citizens of heaven, you're a light. You're supposed to be a light in the world. I'm a light. You're a light. We're called to be light bearers that shine the light that we have found in Jesus. What a privilege. What an honour. Remember that song in kids' church? This little light of mine. Come on. Yes. This little light of mine. Yeah. Guess what? It's not just kids' church that need that reminder. We need that reminder to shine the light of Jesus. We need that reminder that in a dark world, we need citizens of heaven that are going to be light bearers, that are going to say, I'm going to shine for Jesus. Even if it's not comfortable. I don't know about you, we ha- but I feel the responsibility as a citizen of heaven to shine to let Jesus' light shine, but even when it's not comfortable. Because let's be honest, sometimes we can have this idea that when we shine for Jesus, that people are gonna be, wow, look at Darren, he's killing it at life. Look at him shine for Jesus. Look at Kim, look at the way she shines for Jesus. Isn't that awesome and wonderful? And we think that people are gonna look kindly and love it when we shine for Jesus. But guys, we're shining in a dark world, which means sometimes when we shine, people aren't gonna like it. Which means sometimes when we shine, people aren't gonna appreciate it and clap. We're not always going to get a red carpet rolled out for us and have some lights and a stage. No, shining for Jesus sometimes can be confronting. In fact, in Philippians 2, 14 says this, do, this is Paul, do everything without complaining or arguing so no one can criticise you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Can we all agree our world has some crooked and perverse people? Yes, so sometimes they may not like it when you are a man and a woman of conviction who stands up for the Word of God. Verse 16, hold firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain, that my work was not useless, but I will rejoice. For even if I lose my life, pouring it out like liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And all I want to share, I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, that you should rejoice. I will share your joy. Paul is not painting a picture of something that is comfortable, of something that is easy. It means that being a man and a woman of conviction for Christ in our world, in your workplace, in your community, in your family sometimes may be challenging because they will not understand it. But it means that as citizens of heaven, we are called to shine We are called to shine. We are on a mission to let our good deeds shine so that everyone will praise, not you, but your heavenly Father. Your heavenly Father. Your heavenly Father. The world will not understand. But that's okay. Because we're on a mission. Number four. Citizens of heaven build community. Citizens of heaven build community. I feel like this verse, we should know it all. Matthew 28, 19, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Because we're all called to do it. We are. Citizens of heaven build community. Because we understand that while we might be positioned here, we don't actually belong here. We don't. But you are uniquely positioned here. You know, so often I hear well-meaning individuals complain about the society that they find themselves in. They complain about the communities that they find themselves in. They complain about the workplace. They complain about, they start highlighting all of the things that are wrong 
But as citizens of heaven, we are agents for change. As citizens of heaven, we build community and we build community with an intention to build connection so that we can make disciples. We don't wait for them to magically appear. I want to encourage you this morning that we are all called to be disciple makers. It is not reserved for the pastors. It is not reserved for the leaders. You have been placed in your family. I haven't. You are called to be disciple makers. Wherever you work, wherever you go to school, wherever you go to uni or in your neighbourhood, you are called to be disciple makers. Even at church, we are called to build community here. In fact, in the book of Acts, we have the early church led by the disciples who were trained by Jesus. So it's a model of what church could look like. And I don't know about you, but my Bible doesn't say that when the Holy Spirit came down, He went and introduced everyone to everyone so that they had friends. He didn't say, hey, Pete, this is Herbie, meet each other, there you go, now you're friends. He didn't say, oh, this is a new person, here, have some food, I don't want you to be without. No, it says that the Holy Spirit came down in power, moved in power, and then later on it was talking about the church and they devoted themselves to fellowship. They, who? The disciples. They were spending time with each other because they knew it wasn't God's job, it was theirs. So it's our job to build community. It's not God's job. We are citizens of heaven now, not just when we get there. Now I know some of us feel a little bit self-conscious. Maybe you're like, I'm not used to saying hi to people I don't know. I'll just smile and then run away. Hey, I want to encourage you. Build the community you want to be a part of. Build the community you want to be a part of because life is better when we do it together. And can we just, if you ask someone for a coffee, it is not a long life commitment to a friendship with them. If you do a coffee with someone and you realise they're just not your people, maybe they're a little bit different, don't do another coffee with them again. It's okay. Relax. But we do need to be citizens of heaven that build community. I might get the band to come on up. We are citizens that build community because we want to build connection so that we can make disciples. And today you might find yourself feeling like you need to pioneer again in different areas of your life. Maybe it is your workplace. Maybe it's your thought life. You need to pioneer again how you think, how you think in your mind. Maybe you need to pioneer again with your family. Maybe you need to pioneer again in other areas, in your business. But I want to encourage you this morning that as you pioneer again in your life, you are doing it as a citizen of heaven. You are doing it as a citizen of heaven. You have access to the presence of God. Citizens of heaven live by faith. Citizens of heaven are on a mission to be light bearers in our community. And citizens of heaven build community. What a great message that was. Hey, we're so glad that you could join us for our online service. If you want to make a decision to follow Jesus, All you have to do is repeat after me and follow along in this prayer. And it's, Dear Jesus, I give my life to you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. That you rose from the dead. I need you as my saviour. Help me to live my life for you and you alone. Thank you for your love, your forgiveness, and your grace. I thank you for a new start. Amen. Hey, if you've prayed that prayer for the first time, 
Congratulations. We are so excited about the decision that you have made to follow Jesus. There are three simple steps that we'd encourage you to, to follow along. First one is to tell someone, tell a friend, tell a family member, hey, if you don't know who to tell, tell us. We'd love to hear about this exciting new decision that you've made. You can email us at mail at shilohchurch.org.au or you could just drop us a message through Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. The second thing is get a Bible. And along with that, we've got our foundation course online, which you can subscribe to. It goes for 12 days. We're not going to spam you, but it's going to help you along this journey. And the third thing is get connected and find a church. Hey, if you're new to the area, we'd love to have you with us. Come and visit us at 9.30 on a Sunday morning. We'd love to meet you and see you face to face. Now, as we come around the time of us bringing our tithe and giving our offering, I want to encourage us out of Proverbs 3. And it says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. What God is trying to get to us here is that when we trust him, we actually can be entrusted with more. It may be older terminology for the day and time this was written, but realistically what it is saying is when we trust God, He's going to direct our steps and in that process, He can bless us with more. I love that when I bring my tithe and I give my offering to the church, it does two things. It positions me for a blessing and it positions our church to reach out and bless others. I love that we have departments like Shiloh Cares that feeds multitudes a year and at the drop of a hat, in case of an emergency, we can practically love our community. I love our missions efforts overseas where we get to build local churches, feed the poor, and we get to equip others to do the same for their communities. So right now, I want to pray for you and your family as we bring our tithe and give our offering. Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus and we just ask for your blessing your favor and the overflow of your goodness and your grace to flow into every family every business and every person God we thank you for those that generously give week in week out because it helps us reach more people for you we ask all of this in Jesus name amen